And a happy Sabbath. Uh, this morning, we want to welcome you to our Sabbath school. We want to thank God for the Father that he has brought us. We have made it to yet another week. We encourage the people who are in, in the congregation today to join their classes, their respective classes. And our viewers, good morning. Uh, we want to thank God for yet another morning and for giving us a yet another week. We have been looking at our lesson this, mon th this quarter on managing for the master till he comes. Have you been managing your resources for the master? Have you been using that which he has given you for his glory? We looked at the co different contracts that we have and the contracts of tithing. And last week we looked at the, con the offerings for Jesus and the different types of offerings. And we want to thank God for resources and possessions that he has given us. And we want to see how then do we use the rest that he leaves for us. So this morning we're looking at how to deal with debt and I wonder if are we in debt brothers and sisters are we in debt in our families how have we found ourselves in debt we ha the debt crisis is real both for nations and for individuals and for families and we want to see what does God say about the whole concept of debt and so this morning even as we prepare let us look at what we have been looking at in the course of the first uh, the, the past the past lessons and last week as we were looking at offerings and looking at tithe and returning to the Lord that which belongs to him God is really faithful everything we have is because we have been given it to by God and he then says I then return to you 90% of that 90% give a free will offering as a sign of Thanksgiving now then the rest that we are left with what do we do with and how do we manage those resources? So my name is Masio Dor. I will be moderating this session. And in continuation, we'll still be working with our elders um, who will be joining us. And this morning also, I'm joined by my sister. My sister Irene has joined me this morning. Irene, how are you? Yes, it's been an interesting week. Very interesting. Amen. Amen. So maybe Irene, I could, I could just, you know, uh, as we, as we wait to begin, you know, our day's lesson. This past week, today is the fifth lesson. I wonder yes. what you have picked as, as a takeaway lesson for yourself. I have picked so much, so many lessons in this week, so many life-changing lessons. I wonder what you have picked these few lessons that you could share with our viewers this morning. Um, thank you, Marcy. Mm. And, uh, probably, um, I would like to just share the fact that it has been a journey in terms of uh, just being able to understand how we expected to manage for the master mm. as we wait for him. And uh, just growing from the point of where we were able to uh, get to know um, how we expected to tithe. What is tithing? What does it mean for us as children of God? And we moved on to offerings. Mm. What, what, what is expected of us when it comes to offerings? Mm. And now we are moving on to debt and exactly... Um, how should we handle it? Because it's, a, it's something that is happening. It's a, it's a situation that is facing most of us as Christians, as children of God. And how we expected to just maneuver through it and avoiding situations where we are not in debt. So I'm very, very excited for this particular lesson of discussion today. Amen, Irene. I know because... I've also been, you know, this is one of the lessons that I think was a very brave lesson. You know, you know, when, uh, when you put up, because I think the church needs to teach practical lessons. Sometimes we teach spiritual lessons, which is great, but sometimes the practicalities of day-to-day -day dealings of life. So thank you so much, Irene. And good morning, our elder Jared. And it's good to have you this morning. Uh, Irene and I are just recapping and thinking some of the lessons we have picked over the past few weeks because God has spoken to us powerful lessons. I wonder if there's something that you have picked for yourself or for your family that you would want to share with us before we begin today's lesson. Uh, thank you very much, my sister. <clears throat> this uh, quarter's lesson has been amazing. First and foremost, I realize I'm part and parcel of God's family. Mm. And in God's family, I'm not just uh, a passersby or a spectator. But I am a family member with a responsibility within the same family. And then I realized that God as a good creator and a good father and head of the family has covenants with us. Yeah? And one of them being 
a tithing covenant. Then <clears throat> we, he has even given us an opportunity to say thank you for the good things he has done for us. And we appreciate and give thanks to God through our offerings. Just like human beings, when something, someone has, does something good for you, you have to say thank you. God has not prevented us from saying thank you, even when he's the one who provides even what we give to him. Mm -mm. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> I realized that we forgot to pray, and I do not like to begin our lesson. So before we go into our lesson this morning, shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, thank you for a beautiful day this morning. Thank you for watching over us through the whole week and giving us yet another week that we can come here and, and learn of thee and the practicalities of your word this morning as you teach us about dealing with debt. May you speak to us. May you fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father, for without you we cannot teach or even learn anything. Be with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so this morning, dealing with debt. Now, I was looking at the lesson, and, and it's very interesting. Our memory text, our text of memory, comes from Proverbs 22 and verse 7. And the Bible says that the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a servant of the lender. And I think when I was looking at this lesson, this is a very disturbing lesson for me. And uh, you can see the lesson writer is saying, on definition of, uh, one of the definitions of debt is living today on what you expect to earn in the future. And if we're going to just pause and think about that, that statement right there. Today, debt seems to be the way of life, but it should not be the norm for Christians. The Bible discourages debt. In the scriptures, there are at least 26 references to debt and all of them negative. The Bible does not say that it is a sin to borrow money, but it does talk about how often bad consequences of doing so. When considering financial obligations, Paul counsels, render therefore to all the, what, their dues, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs are due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor, owe no one anything except to love one another. And that comes from Proverbs 13, verse 7 and 8. Our viewers, why is debt? Why is debt an almost international scourge at all levels? Personal, corporate, and government. And I even want to look at our country, Kenya, because one of the things that we've been suffering for for the last few years, actually almost 10 years, is the debt crisis and a very growing debt burden. Then we have reached a place where li really the governments now are admitting that we are in a debt crisis. And I want to look at and say by the time as a government we're getting to a place of fear that we are in a debt crisis, where are we as individuals and as families, Elder? And I'm wondering, as we begin this morning, Elder, I'm wondering, what is God telling us about about debt, you know, when you instantly looked at this lesson, what is the one thing that jumped out for you about debt and what God is counseling us on debt as, as, a, as a Christian? Uh, from the memory text, it details it all. Mm. <laughs> the rich rules over the poor. Mm. Why? Because the poor person has to depend on this person. So the rich as to dictate the terms of the relationship. Mm. The borrower is the servant of the lender. Mm. Because until you clear your debt, you are still a servant of the person who gave you money. Mm. And as you mentioned, even countries, um, <clears throat> I am an economist, and I will tell you that uh, when I was in school, was when the developed countries had imposed serious sanctions on our country and things were very bad. They came up with something called SAP, yeah? Structural Adjustment Programs. Mm -hmm. When they came, they made the citizens very poor. Then they had to come up with something we call Structural Enhancement Program. <laughs> so it is the rich who dictate terms. Mm -hmm. And immediately I saw this title dealing with debt. Mm. I said, now, if there is nobody who is not guilty, <laughs> it could be less than one percent. Mm. Because a majority of us are guilty of this. Mm. But the beautiful thing that came to my mind, the title gave hope mm. to all of us who are in debt. Dealing with 
debt. Because this is the greatest challenge that many people have. People have even migrated. People have hidden themselves. People have even changed their contacts because of this. They cannot be able to manage. People have lost property. People have even committed suicide over this. But I thank God that now this lesson is giving us counsel on how we are going to get out of this trap that is harassing many, many people. Thank you. Indeed, indeed. Irene, I wonder, how easy is it to get in debt in this country? I mean, not even in this country. Let's just say as a Christian or today. How easy is it for you to get into debt? Masi, I think it's very, very easy to get into debt. And uh, this is by just uh, looking at um, uh, the number of microfinances that are available or at our exposure, you find that it's about um, five, five million Kenyans are actually borrowing from these uh, particular institutions. And um, some of them you find that um, they're asking for no, no, no much mm -hmm. just to give you money. And you find yourself, you're falling at prey mm -hmm. uh, at these particular um, institutions. And um, I just want to appreciate what our elder was trying to say in terms of um, looking at how do you get into debt mm. in the first place is by just um, living beyond your means mm. and uh, by that factor and money being at your exposure, Masi, it's very, very easy to mm. get into debt, very. You know, it's very interesting because with mobile loans now, yes. you know, you've got I'm sure I think we've got all kinds of loans that are at your disposal and they're even saying that even the elderly you know um, you know we used to think that uh, when you needed to go to the bank eh, to try and get a loan you needed collateral now you don't now you just need to have your phone and some and, and you actually have access to all kinds of monies and all kinds of loans that really hold you as into bondage you know all kinds of bondages now as we look at the Sunday 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 um, Sunday lesson elder um, in terms the, 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 the lesson writer looks at, you know, we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 28, which we have been looking at uh, in the past few weeks, um, verse 1 and 2. And the question is around here, what is God's desire for his children? You know, and there are a lot of blessings that are defined in this, in this, and promises in Deuteronomy that actually shows that God's desire for his children is that they would be blessed and actually be overtaken by blessing. So I am wondering, Elder, how then did we find ourselves in this, in this debt problem? How did we end up where we are that children of God are actually very, very indebted? Uh, the... There are reasons that make it um, uh, easier for people to find themselves in problems. Eh? <clears throat> uh, I, I will go to what the lesson writer has given us, and then I will mention others few. One of the reasons is ignorance. In fact... <laughs> the lesson writer is saying that many people, even the educated, are financially illiterate. Mm. They were simply never exposed to biblical or even secular principles of money management. Mm. Some people think that when someone approaches you to give you a loan from the bank, mm -hmm. you just take it. Mm. You, you, you are not even uh, prepared. Yeah? But someone just came out of the blues and we're just filling in the forms. Mm. I've seen this with many of my colleagues at the workplace to the point where people are not even able to afford fare to work. Mm. It is so bad. And when you ask them, so someone tells you, oh, you see, you know, I, I thought uh, I needed that loan, but really I have realized I did not need it, but I've already taken it. And I've spent it. Mm. Yes. Mm. The other reason is financial difficulties or for financial difficulties is greed or selfishness. Now, <clears throat> this is where the challenge comes in. You find that people's desire and advertising push people 
into debt. And what happens? You are looking at yourself. I need this. I need this. I need this. So you keep on doing what? Going for? Going for money. Even what you do not have. You just go for it because of the greed. And the advertising that normally comes. You know you are enticed. You need this. In fact, one time uh, I was asking people, how many items do you have in the house? You have not used for the last five years, but you bought them. How did you buy them? Many times, someone saw an advert or a salesperson approached them and convinced them and they said, okay, we need these ones. Yes. The other reason is personal misfortune. Sometimes things do happen. Probably, you will, like now, the most common one I find, especially in developing countries, you have a sick family member. You incur a very huge hospital bill. Sometimes you get the support of friends and relatives, but it's not even enough. At the end of the day, you end up borrowing. So you find yourself in this very big trap. Sometimes you find... It is what we call the natural disasters. So, this places you in a situation where you are unable to come out quickly. And sometimes, you may be so indebted to the point where you wonder, what really happened? Does God really care about me? So, these are the three reasons that place many people in debt. And <clears throat> a number of times, if you realize the debt problem, we never plan in advance. This is actually the greatest problem. Like now, <clears throat> there's some misfortunes. Like now, if someone gets sick, you have gotten to hospital. Yeah? And probably this person is admitted and you have been told he might be here for a while. Many people never take time to say, okay, this has happened. How am I going to meet the bills? So sometimes we wait. One month is over, two months. Then now you are told the bill is two million. And that is the time now you start doing what? Wondering and thinking. And it places many people in great debt. So sometimes because of lack of budgeting and also planning, you find that this debt problem becomes extremely worse. Thank you. Amen. That's really sad. And Irene, as a woman, you know, you and I know that we really fall prey to advertising, you know, and living beyond our means. I wonder practically, you know, what would you say to a fellow woman like ourselves in terms of how do you manage this whole temptation to live beyond our means or to fall into all kinds of advertisements? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I just love how, how the lesson is building up, uh, just like I mentioned in the beginning. And, of course, um, the fact that it's really true that uh, in, in a pra practical sense, it's very easy to, to fall prey into advertisement. Mm -hmm. As women, we want to look good, you want to, you want to dress well, you want to live in the best mm -hmm. um, uh, houses and homes, and you find that uh, to some extent it puts you in a position where you're living actually beyond your means. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you, you're stretching and uh, whatever uh, finances that you are having available is actually not able to sustain mm. that kind of lifestyle. But I want to take us into text uh, from the book of Malachi, mm -hmm. chapter 3, verse 10. And I'll read it, out, read it out loud. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord Almighty, and see if it will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not room enough to store it. A while back, um, 
uh, the, those the discussion of uh, uh, just being able to reach that point where blessings are overtaking mm -hmm. us and uh, at this particular point I'm looking at it or learning that in fact it starts from the point of tithing are you honoring God through your tithe? And through that, it's able to um, give you the discipline of how to manage that which you have. And even uh, God commanding a blessing, God commanding wisdom in terms of managing the finances. And I believe, um, Sister Masi, this is just how we, are, we will be able, as children of God, be able to overcome those desires and just uh, tame them and uh, the Lord giving us the the self-control that we need to manage what we have. Amen and amen. Elder Opera, it's good to have you this morning. And um, we see in First Timothy chapter 6 from uh, verse 6 to 9 that we are told now in godliness with contentment is great gain. You know? And because we are reminded that we brought nothing with us and we will absolutely carry nothing with us. Yeah? So we are being told in terms of contentment you know, contentment is a word, but I'm wondering how practical it is. Uh, and you probably, um, among us, I think, uh, Elder Manyara and I are slightly older parents. I'm wondering, new, <laughs> younger ones, in terms of um, the temptation to, you know, to want to amass wealth, but not just amass, but do it very quickly. Among, you know, among Christians, among God's people, do we have contentment to wait uh, thank you so much. One thing which should be clear to people, the desire to acquire mm -hmm. is inborn and it is not sinful. It is not wrong. God has created us with the ability and the propensity to desire to acquire more. Mm -hmm. But that propensity should be in godliness. It should not be in a way that drives us away from God. God has put it so that we can use it in a holy manner, in a better manner, for the propagation of his kingdom. So that is why it is always our innate ability. We want to conquer. We want to do this. That is inborn because God created us with the ability to oversee, to be master. But that ability can also be misused by the evil one. So, and that is now where the danger has come, that there is a, the drive to get it now, 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 now. While we know in the godly way, God has a way in which he molds our character after the divine um, similitude to be patient. So there are virtues which God, amidst all these things he has put in us, he wants to cultivate them in a way that is going to make us qualified for the kingdom. So, in a nutshell, what I would say, the propensity to acquire more is inborn. However, it has to be used in the godly way. That is why it says contentment with godliness. Because if it is left to drive us, it will drive us crazy. That is why people will kill for money, do this. But God is saying the love of money is the root of all evils. And he, he says our lives is not only pegged on acquiring and acquiring. There is much more to, to our lives. Amen. I like that, Elder, because, you know, even as we're looking at following God's counsel in, on Tuesday, and, and, and really uh, picking it up from there. So we are being told that though we all face, you know, this whole materialism and, 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 you know, and, and, and the allures of the, the material world, that there is nothing wrong in and of itself in working hard to earn a good living or to even being wealthy. None of us has to succumb to the trap of, of making idols of money, wealth and material possessions. I'm wondering, Elder Manyara, in terms of, uh, you know, the counsel that God has given us in terms of how we look at possession and the world, how, you know, what are some of, you know, the lessons that we have picked from, from this lesson in terms of how to approach this whole of acquiring wealth without becoming, you know, without becoming trapped into worshipping wealth? Okay. Uh, the counsel given in Matthew chapter 26, verse 24, you cannot serve two masters. We only have one master. <laughs> and who is who? God. If we have another master, 
who becomes the possessions that we have it will become impossible to serve both so we'll ha love one and hate the other one yeah and which one are we likely to hate god. most of the time is god mm. <laughs> because we are close to our possessions so we idolize them and if we idolize them we forget about god in fact uh, when we love our possessions our minds are taken away from heavenly things we now focus on the earthly things so we love the world yeah if you look at colossians uh, chapter 3 1 to 3 the bible says our mind should be focused on things where above but now if we love our wealth we'll focus on things of this earth and remember satan uses the things of the earth what did he tell jesus i'll give you all this if you do what if you wash me so that is the reason why god wants us to get out of debt yeah and out of the desire for earthly things valuing them above god because if we get out of debt we we are able in a sense to focus on who helped us to get out of what debt because it's god who provides the resources that we need and in any case as children of god this lesson has come in handy and actually the title for monday following godly counsel in acquiring wealth and even on how to get out of debt yeah thank you amen thank you very very much and yes as uh, and as i was looking at that you know the counsel of do not love the world or the things in this world and i'm wondering is is in um sister irene I have seen, you know, I was in university many years ago, but I have seen a trend among which, you know, young people, you, you can see a situation where right now you will hear a young person say, but I don't want anything to do with him. A young girl saying, you know, of a godly young man in church that I want nothing to do with that person, but he's broke. He has nothing. I don't know what counsel we're giving our young people to know that even many of us started very, very broke. We can't say we are very rich, but you know, God, it's steps, you know, the steps of coming to the practicalities of life. And I'm wondering what counsel would we give young people about this whole of loving the world and the things of this world as young people? Um, Sister Marcy, it's, uh, it's very true. And that is actually what's, what's, what's happening on the ground mm -hmm. when it comes to um, the desires and the, and the characteristics and outlines that uh, young people are having towards um, who they anticipate mm -hmm. to um, uh, get into a relationship with or um, proceed in terms of uh, life commitment. And um, I can say that um, at this point, um, uh, we, we are getting uh, so much out of tune with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Elder Manyara was just mentioning that um, uh, when it comes to a point where you're serving two masters, it, it becomes difficult because one master you'll have to ignore and uh, be, be, be in alignment with one. And at this particular point, it's actually the, the materials and the possessions. And uh, uh, the, 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 the word I can give uh, the young people is let's come back to God. Come back and listen to what the word of God is telling us in terms of um, expectations and uh, uh, what, what, what exactly do we need because we believe as children of God, the Bible is our manual and uh, is able to just take us through each and every situation. Uh, for each and every situation that you have a question, the Bible has an answer for you. And even when it comes to who are you getting into a relationship with, the Bible has an answer for you. So it is a matter of getting in tune with the word of God and being able to uh, to let the spirit uh, lead you other than the the flesh actually leading you and um, Just to add on that. I believe um, someone would uh, want to ask uh, We are saying um, 
material possessions i mean is it bad to to have a good living is it bad to actually want to have good things and i believe uh, what the lesson has been able to to teach me or help me understand is that there's a difference between the two there's a difference between earning, working hard and earning a good living and uh, making an idol of wealth and money so there's a difference between the two uh, because we can get twisted in terms of uh, looking at it in terms of they look the same it's the same thing but no the word of god is very clear and particular that work hard and make a good living and that is fine but making wealth money um, an idol the Bible does not does not encourage us to Thank do so. Thank you, Irene. And our dear viewers, this morning we're looking at how to deal with debt. Please feel free to ask your questions. I don't know if, Irene, there are any questions or comments that you'd want us to look at at this point. At this point, um, um, just from the online uh, chat, uh, of course, the viewers, uh, we're just having um, just a minute. Okay. Uh, Okay. As we'll be looking at that, Irene, and I'll yes. give you just a few minutes to look at that. Elder Opere, now the truth is we are in debt. As a country, as individuals, we are in massive debt. And we have found ourselves in a situation where you probably got in debt for good reasons. Uh, some of us were told, you know, mortgages, it's difficult to own a home, you know, and so you decided to take a mortgage loan. Uh, some of us, you, you had no way of educating yourself, so you decided to take an education loan. So there are some good, I mean, if I would say good debt, <laughs> it, it was debt in good reasons. But now here we are, as a family in debt. How then do we get out of debt? Because we are in trouble. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Masi, and to all our viewers. Well, you know something which I have learned from this quarterly study? If you recall where we started, we started from being God's family. Getting, managing for the master, but first of all, bringing the aspect that we are members of God's family. We have moved and we have seen as members of God's family the covenant God has done for us, the price he has paid for us. And then now God comes and a topic, it come, God comes to tell us about debt. Why is it that way? Because God, as members of God's family, God knows things which may uh, hinder the goodness for us to enjoy the fellowship of being members of God's family. And one of these is living the future in the present. The future here on earth, not the future of heaven. <laughs> so he realizes that, okay, it is because we have not been good stewards. That is why we find ourselves in the hole. As the older age goes, that when you find yourself in the hole, do not continue to dig. <laughs> so, <laughs> one of the ways now we are being cancelled to get out of the debt is that, like you had said, contentment with Christ. One thing we must purpose to be contented. That is, we must plan and be deliberate to defer, to defer some gratifications for the present to a later date so that we do not just want to fulfill things right now right now if there are things which can be uh, fulfilled in the future then we defer them but now you ask the question it is said there is no way a country can prosper without debts or individuals like we're putting the mortgage but so how would we do the bible has told us in Proverbs, I love the way Proverbs 22, the one we had read, also had told us, 22, the, the text, the memory text. I think it was um, Proverbs 22 had told us something. Okay, the, the, when we borrow, we become the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. But now, one thing is for sure, the Bible also tells us in Proverbs 6, verse 1, that before you become a surety, get to know. You know what happens? The Bible, in a way, knows and, uh, that we will be in debt. But it gives us a way in which we need to avoid the debt, if at all it is possible. It tells us, you must be 
you, you have to do due diligence. Well, that is what I read with the Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1. Because it says these words, my sister. My son, if you become surety for your friends, if you have shaken hands in a pledge for a stranger, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, and deliver yourself. For you have come into the hand of your friend. Go and humble yourself. Plead with your friend. Give no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourselves like a gazelle from the hands of the hunter and like a bird from the hands of a fowler. The Bible gives us opportunity also to do due diligence before we, do, we get ourselves into this. But then there is a concept which we are told we have to make a promise by the grace of God, commitment, not to continue digging when we are already in a hole. Number two, the Bible also gives us that we must be deliberate in uh, uh, clearing with the debts. I know in Things Fall Apart there is a story of somebody, if I don't remember very well, I think called Obiereka, whom if you went to go and ask for your debt, he will take you to a, a wall where he has drawn some charts. <laughs> and he will tell you, Elder Manyara, yours is just 30,000. Look at masses, 100. I have not dealt with the masses. <laughs> it is not that we go that way. But what the Bible is counseling us, let us not give sleep to our eyes. That is, let us try and clear. Let us not borrow more. Let us live within with contentment. But let us try to clear the debts we have as quickly as possible because sometimes we become also funny you are in debt god blesses you with a wonderful instead of trying to clear them you live life normally until the person who had lent you anakutana na wewe anashanga na huyu si amekataa kunilipa anasema bado hana kitu but the way you are living you are living better life than the person you borrowed then lastly another thing i would say is that let us decide let us be specific and be deliberate apart from clearing them let us also be i would say let us work hard the bible has given us a methodology or better methodology in the book of proverbs chapter 11 which chapter 12 verse 11 it says he who tills his land will be satisfied with bread but he who follows frivolity is devoid of understanding the Bible, the biblical principle of living debt free is to work hard. I know in Kenya nowadays we talk of working smart, but working smart in Kenya has a different connotation. It means if it is a tender, how much are you going to get out of it? What, what are you going to cut? That is what we, uh, is the connotation of working smart in the country. We, so if it is academics, what is the shortcut you can do to get the certificate without going through the due course? No, that is not the working smart. The biblical principle is working hard. When we work hard on the land, in whatever thing God has put in our hand, as members who are managing for the master, faithfully, truly, then we, God will bless us and we will have surplus to clear all the debt. So in a nutshell, what I would say, if you are finding ourselves, ourselves in the debt, with good loans, like you're saying, education, like I remember, I took a help loan. And I'm sure I can tell you, that was the first thing I struggled to clear. Because I was happy, because it helped me. So there are those ones which are good, I would say so. But if you have to take it, then do due diligence, do your honest part, and then do not borrow more, work hard to repay, and work hard according to the biblical principles. Amen. Indeed, it, that's really practical. I don't know, Irene, if there's any comments that you'd want us to look at before we move on to Wednesday part. Yes, uh, Marthy. Um, we have viewers uh, who are just uh, able to uh, comment and uh, participate. And uh, we have um, a lot of viewers who are uh, wishing us a happy Sabbath. Uh, from USA, we have viewers wishing us a happy Sabbath. From Guyana, South America. And uh, there's a viewer, uh, Mr. Aya Morise, who I would just want to read that comment. Uh, happy Sabbath. Issue of borrowing the money 
isn't good because we people of God should be able to work hard as we live. May the living God bless you. And uh, he continues to say, as we are living, we need to have a work plan mm -hmm. to avoid borrowing. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's a, a comment from one of the viewers in terms of uh, just being able to advise uh, children of God. Like We need to have a work plan in order to avoid debt. Amen. Indeed. Thank Amen. you, our viewers. Elder Manyara, so now, in this country where circles are the way to go, we, a lot of us have grown on circles. <laughs> Let us tell them. <laughs> we have circles at our place of work. We even have a circle in this church. In I church, remember we yes. have a new life SDA circle. Now, and the Bible yet is telling us, no, do not swear surety for anybody. So, Elder, what are we going to do with, 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 with our lives? What are we going to do? Because we have sworn surety for people. How do you, what would you advise, you know in, 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 you know, in this lesson in terms of what then do we need to do about swearing surety? Sister Mercy, the current language is guarantors. Guarantors, Before yes. you get a loan <laughs> even from Sako Yakanisa, who you must have at least some guarantors. Indeed. Yes. So, Elder Manyara, tell us, do you have guarantors or have you guaranteed anybody? Oh, yeah. And what are you going to do going forward? <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> it is very true. Mm -hmm. And I remember in my first remarks, I said 99% of us at least have some form of debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. we cannot um, ignore this. Uh, <clears throat> the thing is, um, we have guaranteed people. People have also guaranteed us. Mm -hmm. And remember, being a developing country, some of us have come from very far. Some of us survived on well wishes. Yeah, to get to where we are. So sometimes you want to establish something that can help you so you go forward alone uh, and i'm happy that uh, we are going to touch on the term limits and borrowing uh, <laughs> on thursday yeah <clears throat> the most important thing eh? um i like what el Perry said that when you guarantee someone how much do you know someone mm -hmm. that's number one number two do you know what this person is going to use the money for? Mm -hmm. That's one. You need, you need to know the reason. Number three, how, what amount of money is this person borrowing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can it, is it likely to put you at risk? Mm -hmm. And I thank God that, uh, okay, in the past, some people have found themselves in traps mm -hmm. where they have guaranteed people and they have ended up paying. I've never been a victim, although I've guaranteed people. But now I thank God because now nowadays loans are insured. That's number one. Number two, the circle communicates to you once you guarantee someone. Yeah? And in case this person is almost defaulting, they normally inform you. So you can even take quick what? Action. Quick action. So guaranteeing someone <clears throat> from my point of view is that you need to understand the person you are guaranteeing. And probably one thing I must mention <coughs> that um, we have to be very cautious about is guaranteeing consumption loans. Mm -hmm. Money that is not going to generate anything. Mm -hmm. But some, some money that is going to be invested somewhere to in generate something, that one is less see, risky. So, the most important thing, if we can avoid guaranteeing, mm -hmm. which I know is impossible, if we can avoid, the better. <laughs> but if we must, <laughs> let's do due diligence mm -hmm. and only guarantee someone you are sure they have the ability to pay back. Mm. S Sister Massey, if you yes. allow me to add something. Yes. In Proverbs 22, verse 26, it has said, Do not be one of those who shakes hands in a pledge, one of those who is sure, surety for debts. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? The Bible is also giving us 
the council, if it is possible, avoid it. But if it has to be there, then we must do due diligence. Because it says, if you have nothing to pay, meaning we have to do due diligence. Even before we become a surety. You know, I've seen at places of work, a form is brought. Just a friend wants to take loan. In a petition, I make a signature. What how much are you guaranteeing? 50,000. When I work, you have not inquired. How is the, the relationship we, we, we of this person and money? Because that is what Ella was saying. What is the relationship of this person with money? Because somebody can take loan in the name of education, he goes and drinks it. It diverts it. How is the relationship of this person with the money? So we must do due diligence because like we're saying, here in Kenya, we have pyramid schemes. They come in the name of we are going to invest and get good returns. Pyramid schemes. We have Fulisa. We even have Hustler Fund. <laughs> Yesterday, the president said over 800,000 people have now defaulted. Look at that. So, but even that Hustler Fund, for instance, before they give it to you, when you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you register, they will check your credit rating. That is due diligence. <laughs> so even... <laughs> Even if police, Asla fund, all of them do due diligence to know you are rating. Why don't we also, as a people, before we pledge and become guarantors and sureties, also do our groundwork to very know true. that we are doing the right thing? Very, very true. And I know because I have been a victim of guaranteeing and losing <laughs> a lot of money. And it's very interesting because it still hurts. And, and what hurts is that um, is the fact that this person does not come to tell you that I'm unable to pay anymore. Mm -hmm. So you keep, you know, because I ended up paying interest. I had to pay interest for the money I had borrowed on their behalf. Very, very. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, there's a concept about, and I don't know if Irene, you've heard of this. So personally, the one thing I learned from that experience is that if you give money to friends or family, mm -hmm. give what you can afford to lose. Uh -huh. Because if you cannot afford to lose it, so if, uh, you know, uh, Elder Perez's uh, wife is a very good friend of mine. Mm. And if she came to me and told me, I need 10,000 shillings, I need to be able to look and say, my, my relationship with Rebecca is such that I can afford to lose this 10,000 if she doesn't pay. And we will not lose our friendship. Mm. But if you can't, if you cannot afford to lose that money, then don't give. But, um, you know, I'm looking at the, and the writer of the lesson because they're coming from a different, uh, you know, like a different uh, contextual background. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking at, they're saying, do not swear charity. Him, he's even saying, do not even swear charity for your own children mm -hmm. <laughs> in this case. But I'm wondering, in Africa, are we really able to actually say, I, I am sorry, I cannot, I cannot guarantee yeah. you. And um, as Elder has said, they have already guaranteed you in the past. So how do we... How do we balance this situation in terms of, of saying that, um, how do I, how do I balance not being wise, but at the same time not getting myself into the trouble I got into myself? Um, thank you, Sister Masi. I believe um, uh, the right of the lesson also was uh, very clear in terms of bringing out the, the, the biblical aspect mm. of uh, being a guarantor mm. or um, a surety when it comes to uh, borrowing uh, loans. Mm. And um, the Bible is very particular in terms of, uh, please do not, mm. do not mm. uh, guarantee another person's debt. Because from the lesson, what I'm picking is that the, 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 the Bible, or as a children of God, God is not happy when we're in debt. Mm. So um, when it comes to a situation whereby you are forced to be in debt, mm -hmm. as we've seen in the beginning, that one of the reasons you could be in debt is because of a calamity, a mm -hmm. catastrophe, something that has happened and it's beyond your control and you need to get uh, that extra money to cover up for something that has happened. And when it comes to um, guaranteeing someone to get a debt, I believe the Bible is very particular. Just no, even if it is your child, even if it's your, it's your, uh, it's your immediate family, it's just not encouraged. And that is one way of just keeping us away from uh, those difficult situations and conversations of, I helped you get some money, but when they are following me. <laughs> <laughs> they are following me. So it, it really uh, helps us to avoid such tough situations uh, between us. Yes. Yeah. Get rich quickly. Elder Manyara, I have a deal and I have introduced it to you. How do we handle this? Because they are real. We have seen so many of this in this country. 
how do we how do we handle those get rich schemes uh, <clears throat> this is one of the traps mm. that the devil uses <clears throat> people come talk and you see how you are becoming a billionaire <laughs> not tomorrow <laughs> But in the next no. one hour. <laughs> yeah? And you know, it appeals to our desire to acquire wealth, as the Eldomir was putting it. Eh? It is inborn. And many people's lives have been put in danger. Uh, <clears throat> when I just completed university, there were these people who came, they approached my uncle, that they had been told this was someone who was buying some things. I, I'm, I'm sure you have heard some things like Mercury, uh, the coins of Queen Elizabeth, King George. <laughs> and those people are giving 400 million. In the 90s, that is the amount of money Kenya could borrow. Then I wondered, I asked these people, 400 million, yes, in cash or how is it given? At this is in cash. I say, no, this can't work. <coughs> then I was told to take them somewhere to the person who was taking us, to the, to the guy who was going to give the money. Now the guy who is taking us looks more miserable. <laughs> You know, I looked at it and uh, I, I thank God because he has created me a very critical person. Eh? I, I analyzed something before I take action. And uh, many times on my part, something called get rich quickly. It is not. I say I, it, I have a principle. Let me go up using the stairs, not the lift. Because if you use the lift and there is power failure, <laughs> you know where you'll be. So, <clears throat> this is one of the things that has trapped people. People are never contented. You may not have all that you wished. But the thing is, you need to have that contentment and move step by step. And be sure of the step that you are moving. I, I am a lecturer, and I will tell you I'm coming across many students who have taken the school fees and spent it on betting in the hope of getting money. Mm -hmm. And they have ended up losing. In fact, some have even been disowned by their own what? Their own um, families. In fact, the fact is anybody telling you that there is, you are going to get rich in the next few seconds. I like the way the lesson writer was putting it. Don't walk. Run as fast as <laughs> you can. In fact, you are on your way to the grave. Thank you. <laughs> that is true. And, and, and I, thank, I, I thank God that you've raised the issue of betting mm. because a lot of our young people are, are actually trapped in that betting. Whether it's football, betika, I don't even know. There are so many. And, and, and I think the trap comes in when that one person uh, wins the 12 million. Mm -hmm. And all of them now believe they're going to be that one person. I saw a situation where a, young, a, a university graduate is sitting at home and saying, but you know, my luck is coming. My luck is coming. And every year he's passing with this young man is not working, waiting for his luck. What, what, you know, what a danger indeed. Um, as I was reading this lesson, Elda Opere, and I came across Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 1 to 5, and it strongly disturbed me. And you know, uh, I, you know um, first because, you know, God is looking at, terms and limits and, and borrowing points. Eh? But the fact that the Bible talks about after seven years you shall forgive or forfeit this debt. Eh? I wonder, you could take us through that, even as we ask ourselves questions around then, what is the responsibility of the borrower? And is it possible that there are loopholes for people to take advantage of this principle if we are applying it today? Uh, thank you so much. I think that is a very critical chapter which people have used negatively mm. instead of positively. 
Let us read verse 1 to 2 uh, to, uh, and for the verse 3. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Of a foreigner, you may require it, but you shall give up your claim to what is owed by your brother. I want to leave it there. This is a chapter which people have used to, call, uh, to justify declaring bankruptcy. That why don't I just declare myself bankrupt, then I am released from the obligation of repayment. But look, this chapter was majorly to the creditors, not to the debtors. And it was majorly targeting brethren, the Israelites among Israelites. So it was one of the things which God had instituted to target majorly the creditors. So it was not an obligation as a safe way for people to be lazy. For people to be lazy so that now waendele kujigamba sisi tunangoja mwaka wa saba ndiyo tuwe huru. The freedom is coming. It was not meant, it was not to the debtors. It was majorly to the creditors and majorly to be compassionate about their brothers so that they could write off the debts. So, instead of people using this text as a year of jubilee or whichever year it was, a year of release, to subvert the obligation of being faithful and honest in servicing their debts or loans, it was, it was not so. It was meant for the creditors to be more compassionate and more so amongst brethren. So what I would say here, I know people have used this one that, okay, in the government circles, people can, a, a company can dis, declare insolve, insolvency and declare a bankruptcy. Then now they are released from obligation. But you know, it also comes with the consequences. When you are declared bankrupt, ideally, constitutionally, you are not supposed to hold even any office. Even Mijikumi, uh, you are not supposed to hold. But I know in our country, people subvert it. They declare that to ob ob uh, avoid obligation, but the following day, they are their bosses. But uh, biblically, what we are told here, the Lord required these people to be honest, to be hardworking, to be responsible, and to be compassionate. Because truly, as we say, debts can come in different forms, some due to natural calamities, some due to sicknesses. And in that case, it is good to show compassion so more so the creditors could show compassion to their less fortunate brethren. But it was not an obligation, it was not for the uh, old debtors now to just walk free and not to take their responsibility by doing the honest part to service their loans and debts. Uh, okay. Sister Masi, yes. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have looked at this, eh? And it has reminded me, as children of God, how can we apply this in our context? Just want to give an illustration. Someone was taking his children to school. He borrowed some money from me in the hope that he was going to pay me at the end of the month. Two weeks later, the wife fell sick and she was admitted for over a month. And at the end of the month, he came back and told me, um, I took your money. But I'm in this situation. Could you mind? Yeah? Could you mind if you give me more time? Now I cannot tell you specifically when I can pay, pay you back. I looked at it. And uh, I asked myself. This person has not even asked for support from me. For his sick wife. 
Suppose he had asked, I could have given what? A donation. I simply told him, um, if you also wouldn't mind, can I release you from that debt so that you take care of what? Your sick wife. O of your sick wife. Because he had really spent a lot. And I knew he could either not pay or it could take him over a year to pay me back. But with that compassion that Elder was saying, I looked at it and said, I'm a child of God. God has blessed me. And I can't be poor by missing this money. So I, I released him from that debt. And in my view, it could be Christian sometimes not to drag people into prison. Yeah? Especially when things are not of their own making yeah to owe us a lot of money or to be unable to pay us back thank you indeed i don't know irene um in your experience if you've ever had a situation where you either needed someone to forgive i mean to sort of release you or you needed to release somebody and you know just practically and if not that's still fine mm. Um, yes, well, see, uh, I think I've been in such kind of a position, and uh, as even we are talking about debt, uh, I can just take us a while back. Uh, I was in debt, mm. and uh, for this particular debt, I actually um, I was not in a situation, but someone else was in a situation and asked me to borrow for them. The money because they felt ah I'm not eligible but you are uh, probably you could um, borrow for me uh, borrow for us then uh, we, we'll sort it out so I believe we've tackled uh, uh, the situations of um, being a guarantor uh, we've tackled situations where it's you borrowing but l looking at the place where it was you borrowing for someone else and it, it reached a point whereby um, the loan I borrowed for the person, um, they were able to sort out the, the, the emergency or the situation they were in, and I was left with that debt. And uh, they just cut off in terms of, uh, they, they, they felt they are not responsible. And you're like, um, but we're in agreement. What, what is happening? And it was a really difficult situation because now it is you being followed and uh, being given this uh, threatening uh, information in terms of we are coming for you. And you now have to sit uh, down and plan how you're going to uh, repay this that someone else was able to utilize. And uh, it took a whole uh, period of time just to be able to clear that. And you, you can just imagine what, what was going on between me and the person because this is um, an agreement we got into, but one of us is not honoring. And it can bring that uh, discomfort between us as, uh, as, as Christians. And um, it, it really takes... Um, at the mercy of God just to be able to to release it and say okay fine uh, yeah it is over Indeed. So. I know because <laughs> when I was reading this lesson Thursday really disturbed me and the reason why I said it disturbed me because I know somebody who owed me a lot of money you know in a situation a situation like that and I had held on to that money for a long time and now we are coming up to almost to the tenth year <laughs> and I've been hoping that they would pay um, and when I saw this, I said, well, maybe the Lord is sending me a message of saying it is time to release. Um, it hurts. It's not easy. It's not easy because it's not humanly easy. However, uh, the Lord is able to provide. We have come this far. We have never needed to use it. I mean, you know, we, we didn't become poor as a result of it. But, but also what I am saying, Irene, is that for Christians as well, let us not be careless, as Elder has said. Let's not be the kind of people who someone does you a favor and then you get them into trouble because you do not want to honor your, your own your word. And as I, I'm looking at, as we're slowly coming to the close of our lesson, it's been a very powerful lesson. I see practical lessons that, you know, like our, our, our lesson uh, contributor had put out in terms of, you know, the different steps of eliminating debt. Yeah, we have said sometimes debt is, in, is necessary uh, and we find ourselves in a situation where we do need some debt. But some of these practicalities, and I'll go through these steps and we, I, can, I can, you know, anyone can feel free to sort of just discuss what comes out to your mind is that we're looking at some steps that we've been given, determined never to incur another debt. Determined, you know, like, 
if you're already in debt, you know, even if you owe 3,000 shillings, just say, I need to pay these 3,000 shillings, but I will not incur another debt, you know? Uh, and make a, a solemn covenant with the Lord that when he blesses you, you will pay your debts. You know, and as you were talking about your windfall, Elder, yes. <laughs> that you will say, once I now have this windfall, I will repay what I owe. Yes. And, you know, so the first step is that I will not. Mm -hmm. And number two is that then I will repay. And then number three, work them off as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So in the sense, as you slowly get your 300, someone has given you 300 for lunch, and you know you owe Elder Manyara, then go and give him his 300, and now you owe him 700. You know, so you're trying as much as possible to make it fast. And then practical ways, establish a budget. It's very interesting how many of us do not have budgets, you know, in our homes that do not work off them, like on a regular basis. And then for those of us who have credit cards, it's been very tempting lately. Africa, maybe not as much, mm -hmm. but middle class, you are seeing more and more banks offering new credit cards. Uh, please don't take, you know, for the, out the in the West, uh, credit cards are very common, but we're being told, uh, you know, let's not, let's not get into credit cards unless you really know that you can faithfully pay it off. And then begin economic measures. And I say this as a woman in a home. I think we are very, <laughs> we struggle with this in which you walk into a supermarket and you saw something you had not planned for. It's not in your budget, but you think you need it, you know? But now we're being told, you know, start, start, begin making economic measures, which are that if we really do not need to, uh, to eat out, then let's not eat out. Let's cook at home as much as we can to be able to try and get our family out of debt. Now, um, I want to give us this opportunity uh, slowly to just think through this lesson as we have looked at it. And maybe Irene, uh, at this point, we can look at if there are any questions so that the elders can respond before we come to our closing remarks. Um, yes, we have a couple of questions on our, on our live chat. And we have uh, Mr. Frederick Omondi, HSC, uh, saying, um, Happy Sabbath. Is it advisable to take a loan and take to church? Mm. Is it advisable to take a loan and take it to church? Mm -hmm. And um, the second question that I've been able to see on the live chat uh, is from Mr. John Juma. And he's just asking, sorry, um, can debts be categorized as good and bad? Mm. Can debts be categorized as good and bad? Very good. Yeah. So, Elder Perry, is it all right mm. for us to take a loan and bring it to church? It depends. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand it. Bringing it to church for what? But if I understand the history of this church, New Life, like I said before, some of us were grafted on midway. Uh, but, but I hear mm -hmm. as men and women went out of the way mm -hmm. and even took loans to secure, to help quickly secure even the plot. Mm -hmm. In the biblical times, we also find people brought before the disciples what they had. Some even sold mm -hmm their houses and lands, mm. meaning that is like going to the deep jar, the one we learned last time. Mm. People can go extraordinary. So I would say, yes, it is possible. People can take loan to support the work of the church. Mm. But what would I say? It should be according to the measure of your ability. Mm -hmm. According to the measure of your ability. If you have to do it, then don't just do it because people are doing it. Do it when you know you have the ability to repay that loan, if possible. So, because we have seen extraordinary things, which people did. Some people sold their houses. In the Bible, some people sold their lands and brought the proceeds before the disciples to propagate the gospel. So, it is possible. People can take loan. People can put their houses and their property as sureties for that loan, which is not going to benefit them individually, but for the cause of God. It is possible. But if you are doing it, like Deuteronomy had told us, <clears throat> do it according to the measure of your ability and the blessings God has given you. And I would say, if you are doing it, be sure that you are able to service that loan, even if as an individual, uh, without giving a bad name to, uh, to the church or to the cause of God. And then how can we categorize the loans? <clears throat> Humanly speaking, we can categorize them. To, as for me, I would say I can categorize. Mm -hmm. Like now we took, we got a help loan, higher education loans board. Honestly, 
without that loan, I don't think I would have gone through university, through uh, diploma, bachelor's, master's, now PhD. Now, because it is what helped me to do that. So I categorize it as a good loan. But I would say there are also some loans which may be bad. Like uh, Elder was saying, people bet. You may go take a loan in the name of education or in the, you baptize it in another way, but you're going to, to, to bet, put it in pyramid scheme, mm. like the Desi. <coughs> <coughs> or you are taking it to... I know there is cryptocurrency, which is also now trending. I have not done much research on it, so I may not comment on it. But I know people borrow to go and invest <coughs> in some things which may not have proper return or even if they have proper return in the name they may not be glorifying God mm. so I would say there are loans to me which I would categorize as good like now if it is a loan towards education to make me get education and after that I pay but if it is loan which is not also in accordance to the will of God or for something which is not going to give glory to God then I would not call it mm. good loan mm. I'm not a financial expert but and I know I'm a good steward, my relationship with money, mm. how I handle money mm. are from the biblical principles. Mm -hmm. So by divine design, I can see that which is not very good mm -hmm. if I have to take loans. If it is something I can save, I better have a saving plan mm. to buy it, mm -hmm. maybe after some period. And the manana today I have discovered you're an economist. Yes. And I know <laughs> as a country we say there is good and bad loans. And it's true, because sometimes a country cannot run without some of these debts, you know, they, they do need. Um, but yes, as you know, following on, on what Elder Opera has said in answering that question, good or bad loans, what would you advise, especially at an individual level? Um, <clears throat> good loans are those that you are able to pay back. Mm -hmm. Bad loans are those you are unable to pay. You take, mm -hmm. but you will not be able to pay. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the business sense, when you talk about bad debts, mm -hmm. there are those that people took from your business mm -hmm. and they are not paying. Mm -hmm. And actually, those are the debts that the companies normally write off. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they have no hope of getting them back. But I want to say, say what the lesson writer was saying when we borrow. Just make sure that you have the best deal possible and the best interest rate available. Most of the time, people take loans and the interest rates are astronomical. In fact, the interest rates are uh, geometrical engineer. How, how do you call them? GB. The GB. <laughs> geometrical progression, eh? you find that the interest in just two months is twice the, the amount of money that you did what? Yeah. You borrowed. It is good to get the best deal. Let me take my example. I like uh, giving a personal testimony. When I take a loan, the things I consider. One, what is the repayment period? What is the interest rate? And will I be able to have cleared it by that time? Number two, when I take this loan, they start part of my salary that goes into the payment of the loan. How will I t fill up that gap that is created? Because now this is where more debts come in because you find you are not able to pay your, for your house rent, you are not able to pay fees. Now you go borrowing now from people and these are the Shylocks. And then you find yourself getting into more trouble. Uh, the other thing I consider, anything that is consumption, that I'm not going to use to generate more money, I borrow the minimum. The only money I borrow more is the one that I'm going to invest to generate other money. And I have done my study that when I invest in this, is something that is going to come. I'm not just borrowing money then I decide what to, to invest in. I decide I do a business plan before I take that particular loan. And on taking a, a loan to take to charge, 
the only question I can ask on that question is, why are you taking a loan to take to church? Is there a good reason? And this loan that you are taking to church, is the church going to pay you at some point so that you return it? Or you are taking a loan to take to church as an offering, and then it remains your responsibility? Because like in this church, I know when we were moving here, people took loans, and that was to enable us to clear our installments, eh? and the church could refund that money later. But if it is something that we are going to give, and the church is not going to pay back, as the rule is, what El Dober said, your ability, take it, take it to the church, and know that you are able to pay that back. Sister, must you. maybe to add something as we, finish, yes. as we wind up. One, I know from the economic sense of the government, they say we should not borrow for recurrent expenditures. Recurrent expenditures are things like salaries. Those should be self-sustainable. The country should be able to generate enough to meet the basic for uh, recurrent expenditure that we should borrow for development. So like if it is road, water, electricity, things which have got triggers, which trigger other sectors of economic growth. So if it is a road uh, done to some, it opens agricultural area, it brings, uh, it spurs other economics. So in economics, I know that is what they call bad loans. Loans to sustain recurrent expenditure. Mm. But good loans are those ones which we call they are triggers, like we take a loan to build Lapset, mm. Lamu Port, <laughs> South Sudan mm. Road, uh, up to that Lapset mm. Road. You see, it is expected that when it moves from Port of Lamu, it goes up to, when it reaches Isiolo, it connects to Moyale to Sababa. Mm. It goes up to Todonyang, up to South Sudan. It was expected that it would help to transport oil from Turkana to the port. It would spur other economic growth. In economics, they call that one good loan. Mm. But in our own individual, like Ella is saying, we should avoid to borrow for consumption. You are borrowing just to... Uh, uh, for things which may not generate. Sure. I want to add another thing on this list to avoid. Uh, to, uh, to things to avoid here, what, uh, in addition to what the writer said. Mm. Making a hazard pledges. <laughs> you know, when you make a vow, the Bible says you should fulfill it. <laughs> Maybe you have gone like, as we are cholerics, you have gone and you are a con in a congregation like I've seen with the... Uh, politicians. Now you are moved because of the crowd, because you want to earn some bonga points. You are saying, all these children, I am going to ensure that you have Pathfinder uniforms. All of you, all of you are Pathfinder uniforms. You have not done the thought to know how many are there. <laughs> and you see, when you have made that, because you have made it, you have to fulfill it. So, beloved, what I would say is that <laughs> The God desires us to live, uh, to have freedom. There are freedom which have been promoted in this country. Freedom is coming tomorrow. But you've realized that it is not freedom. We are more in jail. But the freedom which God guarantees us, as members of God's family, as people who manage for the master, God desires us to have freedom, not only freedom from sin, but freedom from other things which may lead us to sin. And this is money and material. No wonder mm. Bible has mentioned money more times than even love and faith in Amen. the Bible. Amen. So let us move the godly counsel so that we may have true freedom in the Lord, which may lead us also free to sin. Amen. Total freedom. Amen. Elder Manyara, one minute. Your closing remarks. Mm. Let's all pray and for God's counsel mm -hmm. on managing debt mm -hmm. so that we can be debt free and be pleasing to God. Amen. Irene, your closing remarks. Um, uh, my closing remarks will be um, uh, turning to God mm. in the situation you are faced with the debt. Mm. Turn to God, make a plan and ask God just to command a blessing in terms mm. of you being able to honor the plan in terms of clearing the debt and um, 
of course when it comes to acquiring more just uh, be able to practice that self control in terms of let me deny myself this so that i don't get into more debt amen, amen. Yeah. our dear viewers as we come to the end of our lesson this morning powerful lesson indeed um dealing with debt that may the lord after this teach us to get if we're in debt to get out of debt and we have been given a practical lesson of how to do that may the lord bless you and may the lord guide your families and yourselves to get out of debt and if you're not in debt amen but please do not get into debt next week uh, beloved we go into laying up our treasures in heaven i wonder how practically we lay up our treasures in heaven where we know they are safe and um, as we live in this world knowing that there is a world to come so god bless you have a blessed week even as we go into this week and i will ask our sister irene to pray for us as we close dear lord we come before you this wonderful morning we want to thank you for being with us as we did the lesson discussion today oh god and how we pray that uh, your understanding and your spirit may be upon us oh god in terms of how to deal with finances how to deal with debt oh king of glory my father we pray that heavenly master that you may be with us throughout the sabbath oh king of glory you may be with the online viewers you may be with us in the sanctuary father lord help us to understand your message command your wisdom in our lives oh god because without you father we are nothing oh god and we ask you master that you may just be our guide in each and every step of the way in the mighty name of jesus we pray trusting and believing amen amen, amen. amen. and god bless you